this workshop is really about all of you. And at this period, or this time in uh, your courses, this term, um, you could potentially have it be having some struggles uh, with the Blackboard Grade Center. I know I myself have a love-hate relationship with the Blackboard Grade Center. Uh, and so I really want to take uh, time to address questions, concerns that you have about the Blackboard Grade Center um, to make this really geared towards your needs at this time in your courses. Now, there are things that I can go through uh, with you should we not get a lot of questions, but my hope is that I can really gear this time towards what your needs are. Uh, we are approaching the end of the term, and uh, I know there's always a level of anxiety about uh, what being displayed in the Grade Center and uh, how that looks for students. So we'll definitely talk about that. Um, so I've posted in the uh, chat a link to a shared document uh, that I would love all of you to um, share your questions, uh, your concerns. And some of you have been working with Blackboard for a really long time and may have tips to share with others. Uh, so does everybody see that link? Is everybody able to access it? Um, please take a couple minutes and post your questions. And uh, I will give you uh, two minutes to go and post your questions and any tips that you might have. And feel free as we're going through the webinar to return to that document uh, and post your, your tips. Where is the link? Sure, let me, so it's in the chat, but let me repost it just in case any of you missed it. One of the things about Collaborate is if you uh, are not in the session, when someone posts uh, a link or share something in the chat, you won't see it. You only see what happens after you join. So I just reposted the link. You should see it in the chat. Thank you. Yep. And we'll just take one more minute uh, to share our thoughts over there. So the other thing I'd like to share with you uh, while we're waiting for people to finish posting their questions and tips is my Grade Center checklist. I'm going to post the link right now. Uh, this is uh, something that's really helpful uh, when you're starting out a new course uh, to work through this checklist. Uh, to make sure that the Grade Center looks the way you'd like it to for students and is going to calculate the way you intend it to uh, when you start posting students' grades. So feel free to uh, bookmark that link or um, print that form or whatever you'd like to do to save it. Um, it's a, a, a good resource for you. It's what I, it's what I use. So. Um, you can add to it too as you find other tips and tricks along the way. Okay, so I'm going to share. Uh, we're going to look at that document in just a second uh, that you all have been posting your questions on. But basically the objectives of this workshop is to try to avoid some of the common pitfalls uh, that people hit in the Blackboard Grade Center hopefully increase some of your efficiency in working in the Grade Center, and then uh, see what the Grade Center looks like from the student's perspective. So again, what you believe you're doing is translating uh, to what students actually see. So those are, those are my goals. And uh, now we will, uh, if we don't have enough questions, I'll walk you through my checklist, um, incorporating your questions and feedback. And uh, let's take a look at that form that we've all been sharing on. So I'm just going to uh, share my application. And hopefully, there we go. You'll all see it. So let's take a look. Uh, so again, this is your workshop. And great, we have uh, some, quest some questions listed here. Uh, is there a way for course managers to lock certain features to ensure they don't get changed? Ugh. Uh, I wish there was because we would also like to lock certain features so that they don't get changed. Um, unfortunately, in order for your faculty to uh, be able to grade, 
uh, within the Grade Center, they need to have the same level of access to the Grade Center uh, that course managers have. So unfortunately, that is not possible. Um, the only real possibility there is just a lot of communication and, and training uh, between course managers and their teaching faculty. Uh, what advice do you have for seeing more columns in the Grade Center in a single view? I will show you uh, how you can see more. That's a great question. Um, adjust using Chrome Zoom, uh, largest text, OK. Um, so not being able to see a student's grades as it was possible in the past version of, B, of BB. So um, that one I might need a little more information on. Uh, who posted the, the change in being able to see students' grades? Just one, just one student. Okay, well that that might be that might be a bug, um, but we can we can take a look at that and talk more about that. Uh, I'm actually on a Mac, so everything that you're going to see right now is Mac in Chrome. So uh, we can take a look and make sure that what you're seeing is what I'm seeing, because uh, I don't see a big difference between Mac and other. Uh, and other systems. Um, yes, so I will show you how to set up notifications. And there is no way to change column widths. Unfortunately, that is, that is not possible. But that goes back to the first question about how you can see more. And uh, we will take a look at that. Oh, the scroll bar isn't always showing. OK. Um, so let's jump into Blackboard and we'll return to look at some of those tips along the way. And I will show you how to sort of maximize your view uh, of the Grade Center and then also set up notifications for certain things that happen in the Grade Center. And uh, we'll see what else we can get into. And please feel free as we're walking through this to um, I'm sure it might trigger some additional questions or uh, concerns that you might have. So feel free uh, to interrupt me and uh, ask a question or, or post it in the chat and I will pop back over and see what it is. So I'm going to use the, our online student orientation course. This is the master shell um, for this course. This is an optional Blackboard orientation that many students are placed in, particularly students that um, are new to online learning or are returning after a long time of being away um, from higher education. And so this kind of gives them a jump start in how to use Blackboard and the things that they're going to be asked to do most likely in their classes. So they can submit assignments, participate in discussion boards, and they actually, um, I post uh, fake grades for them so they know uh, what it looks like to get a grade, to receive feedback, and how their instructors might actually be providing them with feedback. Uh, so if you are uh, a faculty member who notices that a student is struggling just te technologically uh, with Blackboard or even just doesn't, might appear to need a little more um, a little more support in becoming a, a better online student, you can recommend this course to them. There is no cost and it is facilitated. And their advisor can enroll them in it. Uh, it's offered every quarter, uh, twice a quarter. Well, prior to, the, prior to the quarter, twice. So I'm going to go to the full grade center. And also want to mention these other options, so those of you who are talking about like how can I see more in the Grade Center, these smart views, so you have one for assignments and another for tests, can actually improve uh, how much you see in the Grade Center depending on what you're working on. So this course actually just has one uh, assignment in it. So here you can see the columns are much larger. Uh, there's only one assignment. Many of you probably have uh, two or three assignments in the Grade Center. Uh, so this would be a view that could potentially give you more room to work uh, within your course. These are called smart views. And so you, you can actually set up additional smart views uh, within your courses. If, um, so 
Smart View is under Manage Smart View, and it's just a way to select certain columns to see. Um, you can also do this with uh, easily with groups. So if you have a course that's using a lot of teamwork or has a group activity, you can set, set up Smart View so you just see uh, your group's work uh, when you're grading in the Grade Center. So those Smart Views can also uh, really help in terms of maximizing uh, the Grade Center view. Uh, another thing that can help with the Grade Center view is collapsing the menu. So you'll notice as I hover over the border between the course menu and uh, the course content area, a gray bar appears in this little arrow. I can collapse the menu and that actually will give me more real estate uh, to work with within the Grade Center. And uh, the interface is actually uh, adaptive now. So uh, depending on which device you are looking at Blackboard on, be it your mobile phone, uh, your iPad, or a very large desktop if you have one, uh, you can maximize or minimize the space that you see. So I can drag my window across and if I look at the full grade center with all of my columns, I can see I think just about all of my columns. Yeah. So if you have a large desktop, you can uh, see all of the Grade Center if you'd like to. Um, and then as I shrink that window back down, uh, you'll see it collapse in on itself and I'll see much less and it would be very difficult <laughs> to work within the Grade Center with this view. So um, that's another way that you can um, make see more of the Grade Center. Now, if you're not experiencing if you don't see that, if it's you have gray bars on either side of what you see in Blackboard, uh, please clear your cache, um, clear your browser cache. We've noticed that uh, we made an update to Blackboard and uh, we thought it was being seen by everybody, but if they hadn't cleared their browser cache or history in a while, um, they weren't seeing that change. So if you don't see that change, those of you, uh, the person who is saying uh, perhaps that they can't see very much of the Grade Center, that, that could also be the cause. So um, that's another thing to look at. Um, another great view of the Grade Center that I use a lot, especially when I'm, you'll see in the checklist that I shared with you when I'm uh, setting up my Grade Center is this Manage Column Organization. Uh, so this presents your Grade Center columns as rows and provides a level of detail about your courses that's really helpful um, in making sure that everything's set up correctly and also gives you an opportunity to again see what you want to see in the Grade Center, the columns that you're actually going to use. So here up at the top you can see that there are some grayed out columns, the first name of my students, uh, the username, uh, their availability. These are all things that I know my students by last name, I don't need to see their first and last name in this particular class, so I've hidden that so that I don't have quite as many columns to, to scroll through. Uh, that will give you some more real estate. Uh, the, in order to freeze certain columns, so maybe I only need to see the student's last name, you can drag and drop this gray bar to wherever you would like up here. Uh, and this will freeze just the last name on the right hand side. So as I scroll, if I need to scroll a lot over to see all of my columns, um, that last name stays there and I can reference the student with the, with the uh, assessment that I'm looking at. And then down below I have all of my grading columns as well as my calculated columns. And you'll see uh, whenever you add a calculated column or you've inherited a calculated column from the master, its category is calculated. So I know that these columns up here are actually calculating the student's score. And then these columns at the bottom are my assessment columns. I can see uh, what categories they are assigned and I can actually recategorize them. So uh, if I had a discussion board, for example, that was not categorized properly, I could check the box next to that column and change the category to the appropriate one. Now you might be saying, 
cares about categories? Why would I use categories? If you have weighted totals, if you're using a weighted total in your course, you are likely using uh, categories. So many of us have discussion boards every week of our course. So we have 10 discussion boards. And those 10 discussion boards collectively are worth 20% of the student's grade or whatever it might be in your class. Uh, that category is how you assign 20% to that collective group of assessments uh, so that you don't have to say this discussion board is worth 0.2% of the student's grade. You can use those categories. And I'll show, that, show you what that looks like in terms of setting up your weighted total. Also in this uh, area, I can see the due dates. It's really helpful for students. Oh, I'm dragging columns around. Uh, it's really helpful for students to set due dates within Blackboard, not just on the student schedule, uh, but actually within Blackboard. When you do that, students get alerts uh, about due dates coming up. And so they can see, uh, get alerts about those. They can set up to have alerts sent to their phone or if they're using the Blackboard mobile app, they'll appear. Um, so it's really helpful to set those dates uh, within Blackboard for those uh, assessments. And I can also see when my columns were created. You can see some of these were created quite a while ago. Um, the points that they're worth to make sure that everything, again, I'm using weighted totals in here, so I want everything to be worth 100%, so my weighted total is easy to calculate. Uh, and then my end of course evaluation is, is worth zero. Uh, and this course does not get the same end of course evaluation that all of our regular courses get, obviously, because it's not a four credit course. Uh, but I have an example in here so that students know the types of questions that they're going to receive. Uh, but, you know, it's not, it's not uh, a determinant of their grade in any way in any courses that we offer here. So this is a great view. Um, if you wanted to hide certain things, you can simply check boxes and you have these options down below uh, to change. You don't need to worry about the grading period, but to change whether they appear or they don't appear within the Grade Center. Are there any questions about anything that I've covered here? Feel free to speak up. No? Okay. So do, if you do make any changes on that screen we were on, you need to click Submit. It looks like it saved the changes, but it hasn't. And so if you are making significant changes on that page, make sure that you uh, hit Submit before you leave the page or you will lose those changes. Uh, so you could see here uh, that the, the last name and the, I didn't save those changes, but this is what I meant by the, the frozen field. So those two, student ID and student last name, uh, stay in place while uh, I scroll the bar across. So that's really helpful. Um, the other thing I want to mention, so in terms of pitfalls where uh, our faculty can have um, issues is in what students see and what they don't see. Um, these red indicators, they uh, are an indication to me that this column is not visible to my students. I can still see it. My students can't see it. Um, I also have the option here to hide this column from the instructor view. That means I won't see it in the Grade Center, but even if I don't see it, my students can still see it uh, if it is set to uh, show for students. You might be asking, why in the world would I hide something from myself and not hide it from my students? A good reason for that is uh, all, you know, many of your complaints about not having enough room in the Grade Center. If I'm finished grading something, I don't need to see it anymore. I'm going to hide it from myself. It's, you know, not something that I need to worry about anymore. I have other things in here that, I, that I'm going to need to grade and I want more real estate to work with, so I'm going to hide it from myself. That's one reason to uh, hide it from your view. Uh, in terms of why you would hide a column from students, uh, I use that in particular when I'm grading. So we all have a lot on our plate. Sometimes we can't get 
through all of our grading in one night. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll hide that column that I'm working on, that I'm grading, I'll hide it while I'm grading it, and then make it available to students again once I'm finished grading. So all the students see their grades at the same time, and if I've had to make adjustments based on, um, you know, sometimes we get halfway through our grading and we realize, okay, everybody is struggling with this same issue. It obviously wasn't that that student wasn't, didn't do the reading or wasn't paying attention. It was something that I did, and I need to go back and I need to make some adjustments because it's not their fault, it's my fault, um, and maybe their grades need to reflect uh, that fact. So that's really helpful, um, being able to grade all of them and go back and make any edits or changes and then show students the final view of, um, of their grade. Um, the last, the couple things that I want to mention before I talk about the notification question um, is the use of this preview user account. So hopefully by now uh, you are all aware that you can add a preview, uh, a student preview account to your courses and you can keep that student in your course if you want to. Uh, you would do that by using this uh, icon at the top, the arrows with the green dot in the middle uh, will ask, you'll be able to enter a student preview mode and at, when you leave student preview mode, we'll walk through this in a second, you'll get prompted with, would you like to keep this student user data? And if you say yes, it's going to actually add a user to your grade center uh, and you can use that user to test your grade center calculations. So I can go through here and I can add grades for each of their assessments to make sure that my weighted total adds up to 100 <laughs> if they get 100 on everything. Uh, and then also test extra credit. So that extra credit is another thing that our faculty often get hung up on. Uh, how do you add extra credit and not have it, you know, make sure that it calculates into their grade as you would like it to. Uh, the biggest tip I can give you there is uh, first, using points and not weighted totals makes extra credit so much easier. Um, but other than that, making sure that when you add an extra credit column, it's set to zero points. So you would simply create a column and when it asks for the point value, you want it to be worth zero points. Uh, and if you have categories if you're using a weighted total and using categories and so your extra credit is getting a little more complicated in that uh, respect because you need to add it to the weighted total uh, let us know and so we can uh, work through that issue with you but because extra credit can be kind of complicated especially with weighted totals uh, so yeah that student preview will help you calculate your student's grade and then can also help you figure out, okay, well, if I do add extra credit and I add it in this way, how is that going to manifest itself in the student's weighted total grade? And then weighted totals. Let's take a look at that um, to see what it, what it looks like. Um, obviously, a weighted total needs to add up to 100%. Um, but here's where I'm talking about using those categories. So you can see in this particular course, I do have discussion boards. I believe there are four of them. Uh, and they are worth 20% of the grade. So if I take discussion boards and I pull them back over here, uh, these are individual columns in my course up at the top. And these are categories of columns in my course. So I'm going to look for that discussion board category that I have. And when I highlight it, I can see which assignments are assigned to that category. And they look correct. So I'm going to go ahead and add discussion boards back over to my calculations on the right-hand side. Uh, and I have lots of additional columns over here that I don't need. Um, And can't seem to get that to add back over there. There we go. Wrong arrow. Uh, so 
then I can assign that weighted total again. And that is being applied to all of uh, the columns, all of the discussion boards within this course. So that's how uh, categories are used to calculate weighted totals. Are there any questions about any of this or anything that I've covered so far? I know I've been talking a lot. Okay. Silence. So I hear someone posted a question. No questions. Okay. I will forge ahead. Thank you, Mike. <clears throat> so uh, we talked about the preview user. And let me think if there was anything else. Before we jump over to notifications and then also looking at how we can use the student preview to view our grades, is there anything else, questions about the, about the Grade Center uh, that I could clear up for you? Let me check that uh, webinar request form. No additional questions. I guess the other thing I would mention about um, how Blackboard appears, I know a lot of people wish that the, the font size was larger. Uh, you can actually set that on your computer. You can uh, modify those font sizes, and that's one of the reasons why we really uh, strongly encourage faculty not to modify the default font settings uh, within their courses by bumping things up to 16 point font or uh, one because it's really hard to manage in terms of like updating content but two because your students if they need to see it <laughs> in uh, a larger font like uh, students who might have a visual disability they have a lot of them have technology installed on their computers that allows them to increase the font size, um, but they also have the ability to change the defaults of their browsers in order to increase that font size. Uh, one simple way that you can do it, and again, I'm on a Mac, but is to click um, on your keyboard control and or command and plus, and that is going to, you can see how much larger that has made the fonts uh, on my screen or even just, you know, the screen in general. And then again, command and uh, minus on your keyboard and that's going to control the font sizes. On a PC, I believe that that is control plus and control minus um, are the shortcuts for that. I heard a question. Grading teams, okay. Um, but another question, cover preferred way to set up teams. Okay, so we have two team-based questions. Um, I can definitely do that. Let me first cover the two other questions or the two items. There's one question and one other item that I wanted to cover. Um, first, student preview. Hopefully you all are aware, but if you jump into that student preview mode, I've set up my grade center. I think that it looks just the way I want. I can easily and I could talk about that too, Mike. Uh, sorry, this is okay. So student preview, I've entered it. If I click on my grades, I can see exactly what the students are gonna see. So I can click on the assignments, I can view the rubric, uh, and see exactly what my students are going to see in terms of my feedback to them, um, and what the bricks look like, uh, what the Grade Center is going to look like. So just a really great tool in setting up your course. I'm going to exit Student Preview. Here's where I was talking about. Um, you want to keep preview user data if you want to see that preview user in the uh, Grade Center. So just a little tip there. Uh, the other question that we had was notifications. So if you go to your My Blackboard global navigation up here uh, and click on your notifications, 
So these are all of my updates within my course. The settings, I know this is a lot. <laughs> I actually have a video about how to do this, which I can share with all of you. View notification settings. You can edit general settings for all of your courses, or you can select uh, a particular course that you would like to change. So I was in our orientation course. Uh, so I'm just going to click one. Um, and what you can do is set up uh, when you want to receive notifications and where you want to get them. So the dashboard is this global navigation. That 31 indicator, that's what that means. I'm getting a notification about these things up there. Um, if I, what I like to do is actually get, uh, so assignment needs grading. I can check that email box, which I already have. That means I actually get an email alert when the student submits the assignment. So it's not, it doesn't give you enough control to say like, it's been waiting for two days or it's been waiting for three days, but if you want to know that something's there and it needs to be graded, you can get an email about that. Um, I would just kind of review all of these and, you know, maybe you want to know when a test needs grading or something like that. Uh, it can be really helpful, <clears throat> especially if you're in a performance-based course. Uh, that can be a really great indicator because students are submitting things kind of at their own pace in those courses. Great, glad that answers your question, Jane. Okay, so uh, the last kind of two questions that we had were about groups. Uh, so let me go back into the orientation course. So how to set up assignments for, and actually have uh, groups in this course. Um, the so it kind of depends on how you want to grade students. If you want to give students, uh, grade them individually for a team assignment, you want to set up an just a regular assessment and have students submit individually like they would any other assignment. However, if you want students to work in teams and one person in that team submits the assignment for the group and they all get the same grade, you want to set up your assignment under the submission details as a group submission. And likely you want to, so you might have different groups for different assignments. So you want to select the groups. Uh, the, I only have two groups for one assignment. So you would want to select the groups that you want to submit to this particular assignment and pull them over. You need to uh, assign your students to a group or have them assign themselves to a group in order for them to see this assignment. If they're not in one of the groups that's selected for this assignment, they will not see it. They will not be able to submit to it. They will not see instructions for it. Uh, so it's something that you need to do in enough time for them to see the assignment, see the requirements, see the rubric. Uh, so it's probably something you want to do pretty early in the class, which means that it's probably easiest for you to assign students to a group as opposed to have them select their own groups, unless it's kind of like a uh, final project in the course where you might have enough time for students to get to know each other and, and organize themselves into groups. So you would assign groups to this assignment and um, set up the, the rest of the assignment in the same way, setting up your plagiarism tools. And I'm trying to think if I have a course that actually has a group assignment in it with submissions, so I could show you what that looks like. Um, I do, actually. Um, so... Our, if it's still available, our uh, faculty orientation course has uh, group assignments. And so when I open up, I mean, oh, that's not the right course. Um, it might not be available anymore. It looks like it's rolled off, actually. Let me jump back over and answer Mike's question. And then those of you that have the groups question, if you could 
hold on, I will show you what that looks like. Um, but in terms of the grading calculations in the Full Grade Center, um, Mike noticed that I had my weighted total. I also have a regular running total. So this is strictly points-based, how the student's doing in the course. This is using the uh, weighted total calculations. And then I also have a total grade. Uh, and this has the city use scale applied, uh, which is the four-point scale that many of you have to submit your grades in. Um, most of our master, most, most of our courses now have this. Uh, within the Grade Center. So instead of you having to, you know, calculate the student's to uh, weighted total and then reference our grading scale to figure out what the student's grade is, you can actually plug that into Blackboard uh, and see what that grade based on the 4.0 scale is going to be. So in terms of the weighted total I have, you can see in parentheses, the scale is there available. Students don't see what's in the parentheses. They only see uh, what's outside. So I've added another uh, total grade so that students can actually see uh, what the scale is. So in terms of the weighted total, when I'm setting this up, I have this is what students see, the primary display, set up as a percentage uh, because it's a way to total. And then the secondary display, just for me, has the city use scale. And so when you select what you want uh, to display, you can see, you can display city use letter grade, city use scale, um, and you'll see that they appear there twice. It's okay. Both of them work fine. You can select either one uh, and this, and you'll be able to see what the scale is in parentheses if you don't necessarily intend to share that with your students. Um, if you want to set up a column like this one to show students what their uh, scale grade is going to be, this is simply a uh, create column. Oh, sorry, not create column. Uh, create a calculated column, a total column. Actually, it's a duplication of the, so if I am calculating the student's total final grade based on a weighted total, and then I want to show them the scale, I need to recreate this weighted total column and then make it the primary display. Uh, so this should be a weighted to another weighted total that matches the one I have. Uh, which it is not, um, but that is the way that I would uh, properly do it. So let me show you what that looks like. Um, I would set up calculated weighted total. Um, I would, you know, final grade, tell students what it is, set up my weighted total the same way that I did to calculate the score but I would make my primary display that scale so that students can see it. Does that make sense? Mike, did that kind of get to what you were asking? Yes, it does. Thank you, Erin. Yeah, no problem. Uh, so let's, if there are any other questions, I know, because I, I know I'm running out of time. I don't see any additional uh, questions listed there. I'm going to jump back over to my PowerPoint. Those of you who had the group question, if you are still interested in having that answered and want to see what it looks like in a grade, and any of you who, who are interested in it, I'm going to ask that you uh, hold that question and stay online, and I'll let uh, E. Katrina kind of wrap up this bigger group, uh, and then we can return to, uh, to that question that you had. So I'm going to pull back up our uh, PowerPoint so that we can wrap things up for those of you who I know uh, probably have very uh, busy schedule. So uh, thank you. And if you have any questions, feel free to stay on. I'm going to cover that group question in just a second uh, and would be happy to uh, answer any additional questions that you might have. Okay, so I have a course pulled up. Uh, I'm going to um, 
share my screen again. Faculty training course, uh, new faculty orientation course, which has a big group assignment in it. So within the Grade Center, um, you can see we've set up uh, smart views that I was talking about earlier, uh, and I've actually set up my own smart view. So this was a pretty large class, and so there were two of us teaching it, and I had a certain number of groups, and then uh, my colleague, actually, E. Katrina, had, a, had the other groups, and so I set up a smart view just so I could see my students uh, from those groups here, and then we also had smart views set up for each of the groups in the class. Um, so in terms of the full grade center, what it looks like for group assignments um, is a lot of gray bars, right? So um, here are, here's this student's submission to this uh, group assignment, whereas the other ones are kind of grayed out, obviously, because he's not responsible for all of those uh, all of those submissions. So it basically creates a column for each group's assignment to be submitted uh, and um, makes the submissions that they're not responsible for. Um, I'm just going to remove the students' names from here. I don't think we don't need to see those. Um, submit. There we go. Uh, so that can be a little confusing. So that's where these, uh, you know, smart views really come in handy. Here I can just see this student's, uh, you know, this group's responsible submissions, you know, what they're responsible for showing up here. Um, and here, let's see, I just saw one of the group assignments, um, group five. Um, you can see that they were uh, graded differently. They had different levels of participation. But what happens, um, and this might actually be a discussion. Yeah. Uh, Um, the assignment there was one group assignment they did a lot of group discussions but I think there was one group assignment in this course you know it might have all been discussion boards um, that they submitted to in terms of a group. I don't know if they had a group assignment now that I think about it. Um, unfortunately, so how this would work, and let me see if I can answer the question uh, without really having a good example um, in here, unfortunately. Uh, if this were a group assignment, um, they you could grade one user and have it, I wonder if I can set this up so that it shows what I'm talking about. Um, so you can you can grade one user and have it applied to everybody else in the group, but then you can also grade those students individually. Um, is there something that I could show specifically to help answer the questions that you all have? I could try to set up a, an example. So here's the group assignment. Uh, you can see uh, that Arlene was likely in that group. And uh, all of the users now have an exclamation mark as needing graded. It was submitted by the preview user account, but I can select any of the students within this group, uh, grade group attempt. And now I can comment on the students' papers here, and they are all going to see what is posted 
uh, here. It's going to be replicated for each of the students within this group. So comments that I add, uh, if I decide to attach my feedback, um, this feedback to learner will all be replicated down here or for each of these students. Now, if I want to, so hopefully that makes sense. Anything I'm doing while I'm grading over here to the left or within the feedback to learner, each of these students will see it. So I don't need to do it for each individual student. However, if I want to change uh, my feedback for that particular student, or I want to change an individual student's grade because they didn't uh, participate, as much as someone else, uh, I can edit that grade here and make changes. And then I can open up that user's uh, individual attempt and I can add additional feedback as to why I changed their grade. So it'll apply to everybody, but then I can go back and I can edit individual users' uh, grades so that they see uh, specific feedback to work that they did. Does that make sense? Does that answer the question?